Hello, my name is Claire Grayhack, and I am a recently graduated medical student from Drexel College of Medicine. I am presenting today on the efficacy of Nissen fundoplication for management of refractory laryngopharyngeal reflux on behalf of myself and the other authors listed below. And I have no disclosures for today's talk. So what is LPR? It's the retrograde movement of GI contents, including acid and pepsin, to the pharynx and larynx, and it can result in damage to the mucosa in these areas. The symptoms include chronic cough and throat clearing, among others, but it can also be asymptomatic. It is a growing public health concern, particularly because of its association with laryngeal and esophageal cancers, as well as other common conditions, including sleep apnea and asthma. In terms of its diagnosis, it is controversial. It's estimated that about 50% of patients with laryngeal or voice disorders have LPR, and 30% of patients with GERD have LPR symptoms. But there is no gold standard when it comes to diagnosing it. There are two currently validated instruments that we use to diagnose it. The first is a reflux finding score. That's an objective measure obtained by a clinician during a stroke. The second is a reflux symptom index. That's a subjective measure based on a patient filled out questionnaire. LPR can also be suggested by esophageal manometry and 24 hour pH impedance studies, but neither of those is a definitive diagnosis, and there's no universal agreement on how to use the instruments and studies to diagnose LPR. The treatment of LPR traditionally has been PPIs and H2 blockers much like GERD, but this is not always effective, which has led us to seek other ways to treat these patients. Surgical intervention has come up, and in particular, a laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication, which is the topic of today's talk. It's been shown to work well for GERD and has also shown symptomatic improvement for LPR and professional voice users in one study. However, the traditional surgical criteria for a Nissen fundoplication were developed surrounding GERD, and LPR patients may not qualify based on that traditional surgical criteria, especially if they can't get off medication. In particular, one measure called a Demeester score, which is a composite score of esophageal acid exposure, may be normal in patients with LPR. So our question today is, can Nissen fundoplication work for refractory LPR? in those patients not meeting traditional surgical criteria for Nissen, such as patients with a normal Demeester? And do we see that both subjectively and objectively? Our methods for this study were that we used a retrospective chart review with approval from the Drexel IRB. Subjects were patients who underwent laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication between 2005 and 2017 with refractory LPR who were seen in the tertiary ENT office of our senior author. We collected preoperative and postoperative data on strobal video laryngoscopies, 24-hour pH impedance studies, and esophageal manometry, each of which the patients had to have in order to be included in this study. The strobes were performed by a laryngologist at a tertiary care center, and a reflux finding score was assessed preoperatively and postoperatively at least three months following the surgery. Reflux finding score of seven or greater was considered positive. A 24-hour pH study was also done on the patients preoperatively and postoperatively, which is where we obtained a Demeester score, impedance measures, and then also the patients filled out a diary during the study. And that was correlated with the reflux events to give us a pH reflux symptom index different than the reflux symptom index that the patient filled out themselves. Patients during this study could be on or off anti-reflux medication. Esophageal manometry was also collected preoperatively and postoperatively, particularly the lower esophageal length and pressures. For our results, we had 149 patients who underwent Nissen fundoplication for refractory LPR. 59 of those patients had complete pre-op and post-op assessments, and the ages ranged from 18 to 76 with a median of 51 years. 22 patients were male and 33 were professional voice users, a little over half. 
this first table is demonstrating the mean change between post-operative or pre-operative and post-operative values. In particular, we looked at the reflux binding score in this first line, as well as measures for esophageal manometry in these lines and pH impedance values in these lines, as well as the Dean We did see significant change in the reflux binding score from the strobe, as well as the esophageal manometry measures, both pressures and length, and most of the pH study measures. The two where we did not see a significant change were the Dean score, which is reflected here in this p-value, as well as for the reflux symptom index associated uh, with non-reflux events. So if a patient had a symptom occur, but there was no reflux associated with it, that did not change. Additionally, we looked at the medication usage before and after surgery, and we see here that 83.1% of these patients were taking a PPI and H2 blocker preoperatively. That decreased to 22% of patients postoperatively, and over half our patients were able to get off medication, so 52.5% following the Nissen bundle application. Of those who had pre-op and post-operative dosages available, 34 had decreased dosages, and 29 were on no PPIs or H2 blockers, and that's out of 46 patients who had those dosages available. We also had 28 subjects volunteer their satisfaction with the procedure. So where does this fit into the research that's been done on LPR and Nissen bundle application? Well, previous research has suggested that a Nissen can improve LPR symptoms, but there hasn't been assessment of objective measures as much through things like pH studies and monotry. Reflux finding score has been previously assessed, but the results have been conflicting for that. So the results in our study indicate both subjective and objective improvement in LPR symptoms and signs. The pH reflux symptom index, which again was obtained through the 24-hour pH uh, study, decreased significantly, indicating improvement in their LPR. Also, total reflux and proximal reflux episodes decreased during that 24-hour pH study postoperatively. As expected, we also had increased lower esophageal sphincter pressures postoperatively, which makes sense because of the way the Nissen is performed. And the reflux binding score was also found to have decreased significantly post-op. Again, an objective measure indicating improvement in LPR signs after surgery. In terms of life burden of LPR, medication usage decreased significantly post-operatively for these patients to the point where many patients were able to go from taking multiple medications a day for their LPR to no medications after the surgery which just shows what a big difference this surgery can make. However, the Demeester score was the one that did not show a significant change. For these patients, that Demeester score was not necessarily elevated before surgery, and that typically is something that would play a role in qualifying for a Nissen fund application because it is part of the traditional surgical criteria. These patients were often on anti-reflux medications preoperatively, though, and they couldn't come off them for the 24-hour pH study. Because of this, we're seeing that patients who may not have qualified for a Nissen fund application based on the traditional surgical criteria still are seeing improvements in their LPR following a Nissen fund application, and that they may still be a good candidate for that surgery. Our study is limited by its retrospective nature, we were not able to collect the reflux symptom index, the patient filled out questionnaire, preoperatively and postoperatively in enough patients. Um, and so we did not have that measure. It also is a small sample size and a single institution study. So certainly having a multi-institution study with a larger sample size would provide more insight into this condition and the Nissen for this condition. However, our results do suggest that an instant fund application is effective for refractory LPR and that it should be considered in patients who maybe don't meet the traditional surgical criteria. 
thank you for listening to my talk and here are my references.